Hi, my name is Carol and this is my channel, so Carol. I'm down at the bottom of the garden again filming my instalment of hashtag Friday Sews, which was created by Jen at Today in Jen's Sewing Room who has the most amazing channel and has inspired a whole lot of YouTube sewing creators to get together on a Friday and under this hashtag and talk about what we've been doing or buying as my case may be this week. Um, so first of all I would just like to say that this has been the week of having not enough fabric. Now I'm not talking about the size of my fabric stash, I'm talking about whenever I buy fabric I don't seem to ever buy enough. I Very often I see fabric and I'm not sure what I'm going to make with it so I tend to get one and a half meters if I think it's going to be a long sleeve top, sometimes some crop trousers or two meters at the ultimate maximum. Now that means that I never have enough to do lots of things I want to do and this was the week. This was the week that I wanted to make another of that Birda uh, zip up hoodie that I made last week and to that green sweatshirt fabric and no I didn't have enough fabric. I wanted to make something special for my husband for his birthday and although I managed to do it in the end there was it was tight on fabric I had some fabric I wanted to make my daughter a sweatshirt hoodie out of. It's a long one. Actually, I've got one on, actually. it's um, I'll show you the pattern a bit further on. Um, again, I didn't have enough fabric. I've done it, but I haven't got enough for the hood, so I've had to do a different neckband. So that's maybe that's what I should do going forward this year. Not be so afraid of having fabric left over, um, because you can use it. It's harder to use knit fabric. I know with cotton it's easy. You can make lots of things with the cotton fabric you have left over. Knitted fabric is slightly more difficult unless you make lots of knickers with it. But yeah, I, I think I need to start buying larger quantities of the fabric going forward because it was so frustrating at the weekend, believe me. Every time I got the pattern pieces out, I ironed the pattern pieces, I ironed the fabric, I laid it around and then you realise you haven't got enough. Incredibly frustrating and I'm sure you all know exactly the problem. I have made a few things this week, a couple of things and halfway through a couple of other things. So I'm going to put the fashion show segment of my video in now. So this was the second jacket I made from the Birder magazine, uh, 9 2020 and it's that jacket pattern there. Um, I made it last week in the Ponte. Now, although that was quite small, it is definitely wearable and I wore it to yoga. So this time I made it in a navy sweatshirt fleece. It's a very floppy sweatshirt fleece, not a massive amount of stretch in it. I sized up and remembered to do the seam allowance this time. Um, this time I also added pockets on the front um, you've got the drawstring neck, so all in all went really well, maybe even a slight little big for me, but that's fine. The only thing I hate about it, and I tried to correct it, was the fact that this, the bottom cuffing isn't, it isn't smaller than the piece, front pieces and back pieces, so it doesn't bring it in at all, it just kind of stays down. I tried to put some elastic in the back, but that looked horrendous. So I am really pleased with it. What's not to love with a navy jacket like this? Looks a bit smarter than a cardigan and not as scruffy as a hoodie. So underneath, I have the Butterick t-shirt I made. So I will just take that off to prove that the zip does work. This was the Butterick 6874. That t-shirt pattern I fell in love with because of the side splits with the buttons on. So I made this, I made it in a size 12. I normally make everything in a size 10, um, but I have been getting some lines across here on a on a tw on 10, so I've decided to go 12. It fits quite nicely, um, very pleased with it. You've got these side splits and I put some um, purpley colored buttons on there. This fabric actually was left over from 
my uh, So Purple to End ALZ challenge last year. I made it in two fabrics, so I had quite a bit of this left over. So as a trial, I was really pleased with this. So nice, nice length t-shirt. Didn't have to do anything to it. As I said, I made a 12. I don't think it's too bad. Maybe the shoulders a little wide on me could come in a little bit. Probably if I did that next time, that's what I would do. But very happy with it. My two items this week. So it's the new year, the weather's bad. Do you want to laugh? This will, this photo will make you laugh. I ordered some pattern paper from Amazon uh, this week and it came. I wasn't home when it came, um, but I walked into the kitchen and my pattern paper was on the table. And then in the corner, there was the box that it came in. And I will put a picture in because I guarantee it's gonna make you smile. Yeah, Amazon, you excelled yourself on this one. <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? Another thing I wanted to do this week was make up some pyjamas for my daughter. I think uh, you'll find me, I mentioned it last week and I was really excited to get going on that. I had some two beautiful bits of poppy jersey fabric I got from Lovecrafts. This beautiful stuff here, just, oh, gorgeous. And this stuff here. Now, again, as I said in the beginning of the video, I laid it all out not enough fabric. I got enough fabric for, for when I make it because I jiggle it around sometimes, but if you're making for someone else, you don't want to have to do that and match, mix and match fabrics. So I ended up having to order some more. So I now have two lots of fabric and because I love this one so much, I'm sure I can make a t-shirt out of it, something in the end. And the same for this, if I get stuff left over. So I did manage to make her pajamas, which is why I went on to make her the hoodie top. Now this is a hoodie top, as I said I'm wearing now, and it's this one, the New Look 6529. I'm halfway through it, I just, I didn't have enough for the hood, so I put a normal neckband. I did think about putting a polo, sort of a uh, raised collar on it, she wasn't a fan of that. I did sort of mock it up and I, I didn't like the look of it either, so I've just kept it to a normal round neck, because it was v-neck, but I brought it up. So... Um, I'm just waiting for her to try that on and then I can finish it off and then hopefully next week I'll have some footage of her wearing it. But it is a really good pattern. Um, I've made it a few times. I had to make it a bit shorter because I'm short and that bit comes down way too long. But there is a leggings pattern. No, never made the leggings pattern, but made this quite a few times. I did get some fabric this week and I know everybody is being really good at the moment but I have to say in all honesty I'm running a little bit short. I've got a lot of summer fabric which is just not suitable for now. Uh, having said that I went to a fabric shop that I don't often visit and I picked up some bits of fabric. Now they're all, all worthwhile purchases. First of all this bit of fabric I need to make some more uh, boring lounge cushion covers very boring. I hate my cushion covers in there at the moment. So um, they're too jazzy. They're like multicoloured squares. You might have seen them in one of my videos. Um, but this is much more toned and classy. So I'm going to make some of those up. I came across this beautiful um, viscose linen. Look at this colour. Isn't this beautiful? It's, it's it's darker than a brick red. But the thing about, I got all this from Fabricland and their prices are so reasonable. Yes, you've, you've got to sort of search through to find some, some really sort of different pieces and I, they just seem to have a new lot in, which was amazing. So I've got that. That's probably going to make a top out of that. Um, wouldn't make trousers out of that colour. This was, this was another viscose linen they just had in. Look at this. Look how interesting this is. It's like... I want to say, I'm either wrong by saying Japanese pagodas or definitely Asian sort of pagodas. I think it's, it's just such an interesting fabric and it is sort of a very light viscose. Now what I might do is um, colour block it out, not make a whole dress out of it, but put some sort of chambray on the top and the bottom as a um, sort of make it a shift dress. But that love that, definitely going to put that one away. I saw this in the bargain bin and it's really bright and there's not much of it, but it was £2.49. 
Now, I know a few people in Florida that would just love this fabric. There's only about a metre of it. Um, I'd say it's like a cotton lawn. It's a very fine cotton, um, yeah, similar to a cotton lawn. Um, but, wow, that's going to make a top to brighten up Britain. I could wear it now, actually, because the weather's been so awful. So, um, yeah, bought that as well. And I also bought some stretch black denim because all winter, autumn, I've been meaning to make another pair of a birder sort of jeans pattern that I've used a couple of times and I've been looking for some stretch black denim. So I'm hopefully going to try and make some of that. Now, my husband's birthday in February and I have told him specifically not to watch this video. He's very kind and he's very supportive and he does watch my videos, but I've said not to watch this one. Um, you'll see the reason why in a minute. I want to make him a couple of things and so I ordered some, I got this from Lamazi Fabrics. Um, this is like a khaki sweatshirt. It's really, really soft. Um, no, it's actually a French terry, sorry. It's not a sweatshirt, it's a khaki French terry. And this beautiful, what they call Moroccan blue, single knit fabric. It's just buttery soft. So I just want to make him a couple of long sleeve tops for that. And I know that's a colour that's really going to suit him. Also this week, I managed to get, when I went into Fabricland, I picked up two counter books. Now, it was a Butterick one, and now you know my obsession for Butterick at the moment, and the Simplicity ones, so they're from last year. But I I had one, the McColls, didn't I? I had that um, sent to me by mistake, and that kind of got me into having pattern books. Um, so I've now got the Simplicity one, and I just love looking through it, because there are things in there that you never dreamed. Yes, I know we can all look on the websites and have a look through the patterns, but it's not as good as having a good old-fashioned book. So I had to buy this. They're only three pounds each. Talking about Butterick, I have got a top I made last year. I'll insert a picture. Um, I really like it. It's probably what I call my classiest top that I've made. And it's this pattern here, Butterick 6813. And I made this version. And I chose fabric very similar to that. And it does look very similar. Well, we're going away in a week and a half and I just want to make one more thing to wear in the evening. So I've got this viscose fabric that I haven't used yet that I think I bought in autumn. So I'm hopefully, I haven't got much time now between now and when I go, but I want to try and make another one of these because it, it worked out so beautiful. And all I need is kind of a posh top for the evening. So, and I just wear black jeans day after day. Um, so I'm hopefully going to finish that, make that next week. And I've also just nearly, very nearly finished. I've just got to do the buttons on my, one of my husband's birthday presents. And that was a shirt, the new look 6197. I have made it quite a few times for him. I'll put a couple of pictures in actually, because a few Christmases ago, I made him two shirts. One in Brussels sprout fabric and one in festive carrot fabric. And bless him, he does wear them every year. So, but when I was in Florida uh, with Jen and Trish, I came across this fabric, ACDC fabric, and he loves ACDC. He has as a child. And I thought I've got to buy this to make him a shirt that he can wear when he has his gigs because he's a drummer amateur drummer in a band and um, a shirt is nice and the cooling so I've all I've got to do is do the buttons and I haven't quite had time but I am so pleased with it it's got one pocket I didn't pattern match the pocket because I was running so short on fabric it was ridiculous in fact a few things are probably the wrong way wrong grain but uh, no so hopefully I will get that finished and I'll probably have to model it for you next week because his birthday is not till we, um, not till the end of February, but I just wanted to get ahead of the game and make it for him. So that's a really good shirt pattern. Viv Mum, I don't know if any of you watch Viv Mum's channel. She used to use this pattern all the time for her hubby. And um, I've never made it because I don't tend to wear shirts, but the ladies version is meant to be equally as good. 
nice and simple to put on. It's not got a collar stand, it's just got a flat collar. It does have a yoke at the back which makes it look a, a bit better. Um, simple shirt to do, honestly, it's great fun. I popped over to see my mum and dad this week and I don't know if you remember, I will put a picture up that my dad made me a machine needle box. Um, a divided box that I can just pop my machine needles in and I've sort of gridded them out to, to say what they are, fine needles or general whatever. Um, and I was running out of space so uh, he very kindly has made me another one. Um, I'll put a picture up but I've just got to decorate it like I did the other one. But he's so amazing at doing these little things. He's 88 and he is still, he loves being given a project and just cracking on with it in his little shed and he's very skilled although he's very understated it's it's brilliant um, so I look forward to using my second needle box so thank you dad now I as I said before I normally put some photos at the end and last weekend we did oh, the weather was dreadful honestly wind and rain I think we've had day after day but we still went out we have a dog so we still have to go out so we went um it's only about five miles away from us it's a common um and we did a normal walk we came back a different way than we would do normally it was really muddy and very wet but we walked past a clump of trees and my husband said oh what's that that's like sort of concrete bunkers and we went up into the trees and we found I'll put the picture up but it's an RAF, um, RAF headquarters command post that was from the Second World War and it's still sort of very much intact in a way. Uh, you went down these stairs and in this sort of bunk and there was all these rooms and then you could walk up these stairs and look through the grill. Sadly of course like everything like that because there's access from the public you have graffiti in there so I didn't take any footage inside because there was very dodgy uh, graffiti um, but we did uh, we walked through all the little rooms it was amazing to think that this has existed since World War II apparently there's a nest of um, set of tunnels nearby it as well but we couldn't sort of find those but absolutely fascinating um so that was such a find we've walked past it so many times and just happened to see it that day came back a different way and just saw it from a different angle and sort of have a good explore so i'll put photos into that funnily enough mickey would not go in we were inside and he just stayed outside dogs can sense things can't they sometimes and no he was not going in so like i say i'll put photos of that at the end so next week I will be doing just a little bit of sewing left over because we do go away um, Saturday week and uh, so I've got to finish the shirt ideally, finish a shirt for me, finish the um, uh, sweatshirt for my daughter. I think that's probably all I'm going to have time for because we've got a lot of packing to do. Um, so I will be doing that. Uh, we're actually off to Austria for a week. now every year for I think about 14 years we went skiing in Austria uh, the third week of January. Um, we haven't obviously done it for the last three years it'll be since we've been there. We've now completely lost our nerve of skiing and quite frankly we just don't want the injuries anymore because you, you take so long to get over them. So uh, we are going to just do some walking. We love walking. Uh, a couple, well, last time we went we did some snowshoe walking which was amazing fun and equally as tiring as skiing. So we are going to hopefully do a bit of that if Austria's had some snow because it's very short on snow at the moment. Um, just enjoy ourselves. We love the Austrian food. We love their hospitality. It's a fantastic, beautiful country. So we're just going to have a nice week there. Hence, I don't really need anything posh for my holiday because we'll be in salopettes and, and everything during the week. But um, I'll probably talk to you more about that next week anyway. But so I will be busy, busy. Um, hope you're having a marvelous time wherever you are. I hope the weather is not like it is in Britain. And I hope you get some sewing in and have a lovely weekend and I will see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.